Hey everybody, this is Alchemisted, and this is once again Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. Last time we went through Task Force Hippocrates and we learned the Klingons have been up to some strange shit around the Pycanus area. So now we've got secret orders. Let's go see what's going on. Captain, Starfleet Intelligence has learned more about Ambassador Bavat and his secret organization of which he claims to be a member. Marta, the woman Starfleet rescued from the Treasure Trading Station, claims that the Klingons have a secret base in the Hiromi Cluster that they are using as a staging area for an attack on the Federation. I've been authorized to provide you with the coordinates of the Klingons' base. Proceed to the Briar Patch and find out what the Klingons are hiding. If there are any weapons there, you are to deactivate or destroy them. So essentially, I need to infiltrate their base in the Briar Patch and determine whether or not they have the ability to launch a nuclear weapon and stop them if they do, yada yada yada. Let's see, disruptor beam arrays, none of which are useful. So, Briar Patch, we are heading back to the Regulus sector block. So let's go ahead and leave the ship interior. And we are in the Batran cluster right now. Let's see, I was fighting a bit of Borg. So let's go ahead. I guess the shortest way would be going to Ada or Donnie first. Ada or Donnie! I wonder if it'll depart immediately. No? Duh. Oh well, I tried to save a little time, but no. Oh, for a moment I thought that was a constitution that had, like, Borg parts on it. I haven't seen many of those. I haven't seen many people putting Borg parts on the old TOS, Connie. Learn to drive. Calls himself Jim. Does he look like Shatner? Not in the least. Chugging a little bit. Chugging just a bit for some reason. Not quite sure. I still gotta go a little bit this way. Just put that on, make this a little bit faster. Utopia Planidia. Still not in the game. Supposedly, like, wasn't it supposed to be finished a long time ago? Didn't it, isn't that what they said? Was that the solar system was finished a long time ago? I know Utopia Planidia has finished because there's a Klingon mission that revolves around Planidia. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I should probably make this mission... forgot to make this mission the top one. There we go. Make primary. Don't drop it. So the Briar Patch was introduced in Star Trek uh, Insurrection, which is... Mm, it did well. It did well in the box office when it first came out. It's, it's not one of those movies... It's kind of one of those movies that has become underwhelming over time. Like, uh, g the general sentiment when it came out even then was, you know... It's, this would have been a way better episode of TNG than an actual film. And that's really what it was. It's a two-hour TNG episode. Captain, long-range sensors are picking up several Klingon battle groups. They appear to be placing self-replicating disruptor cannon turrets throughout this region of space. If we don't take out those cannons now, this entire asteroid belt will be bristling with Klingon defenses. Captain, the composition of this nebula will make maneuvering at high speeds impossible. In addition, the Briar Patch contains pockets of Metreon gas, 
This gas is highly reactive to weapons fire, and it could be very dangerous. Recommend we keep the Waglinde at least four kilometers away from the gas clouds, Captain. Don't you fucking dare. Don't you dare. That should be but safely out of range if one of them happens to ignite. However, the gas can be used as a weapon. Captain, do you remember the Riker maneuver? Ah, uh, I wish I could forget. If we detonate the pockets of gas and the Klingons are close to them, they'll do a lot of our work for us. So what she's referring to is the Riker maneuver was essentially a joystick that popped up out of the floor of the Enterprise. I wish I was fucking kidding. So yeah, basically there's metric there's this unstable shit that's all over the place and it will blow up if you get into a firefight close to it. I don't particularly have to care because as you can see, I can just sort of fly through it. It won't do anything to me. I'm still not going to be flying through it, though. <laughs> I'm not going to fly straight through the clouds, though. This looks off center. So yeah, basically you gotta you're gonna have to hunt for the various turrets in here. Pretty much the only aggravating part of it, really, is you're hunting for them in this place that will kill you if you fire a stray shot. Although, an easy way to go through this mission is basically just to shoot every pocket of Metreon. To fly straight through, shoot every pocket of Metreon gas you come across, you will kill something. <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee. Come on. Where is that damn eighth enemy turret? Oh, there it is. I've decided to go full guns in this part because this part gets really tedious. I remember, I remember this part. You know, kind of felt like uh the first time I went through. And you are the last. 
And now you are not. Now there's a big ass pocket of Metreon gas in front of this place. So watch yourself because they will start shooting into it. Sir, sensors are tracking a Klingon battleship patrolling near the large asteroid. It appears to be a guarding facility on the asteroid's surface. Energy readings for the facility suggest some sort of military research base. My first officer was talking to me. I know a pocket of Metreon gas when I see it. shooting at me while I'm talking to my first officer. And there's another pocket right there, so don't fly into that. Don't fly into the side of the rock either, Jesus. Uh... Stray fire. Jesus. Captain, the patrol has been destroyed. We should be able to proceed. The away team is standing by. They will transport on your command. Alright, let's go down there. Let's go see what's what in this place. Captain, there are several Klingons here, but my tricorder. Captain, there are several Klingons here, but my tricorder is picking up two additional life signs in the area ahead. Hostages, maybe? Well, you know what that means. It means the four of you are staying here. I'm gonna test out this crossfire triple. Turn this on. Turn that on. That's a dead end. I'm okay! <laughs> Sir, you're supposed to go that way. Go down! There's no way a photon torpedo will punch through solid neutronium. Hint. This is a big, massive hint at what is coming later. In retrospect, that's actually a kind of a nice little bit of foreshadowing. It's like, of course, people who haven't seen the original series aren't going to know what the Klingons are talking about, but... You know, then then you're going to think back. Like, even people who've seen the original series, like, I, like I've seen the episode they're talking about. Oh god, text. Like, I've seen the episode they're talking about. And, uh, it didn't, it didn't immediately register on me. Well, it, it registered once I saw the name of the mission, but... You know, it didn't, it didn't, like, immediately register Neutronium? Where have I heard that before? I'd be happy to tell you what I know, but ask fast. I'm going to the shuttle bay and getting out of here. How did you get here? I'm an independent researcher. The Klingons have been putting word out that they are paying a lot of latinum for simple projects. It sounded like a good deal. Then I got here and the good deal became work or die. I should have known better. There used to be about 20 of us, working on various projects. As people completed their work, they would disappear. I heard one of the Klingons say that my time was up. He got here just in time. What do you know about Ambassador Bavat? He says he's keeping the Klingon Empire strong by prolonging the war with the Federation. 
The Vat thinks that unless the Klingons have an enemy to focus their energies on, they'll fight amongst themselves and tear the Empire apart. The Vat has a plan to keep the war going. He hasn't let much information slip, but I know that he found some sort of device abandoned in deep space. He wants to use it in an attack so horrible that the people of the Federation will demand Starfleet take revenge. The fighting will continue for years. What are you going to do now? I'm finding the first ship that will fly and getting out of here. I'm done working for the Klingons. Some of them are honorable, but Bavat can't be trusted. His desire for the war with the Federation to continue has blinded him. What do you know about the weapons here? The Klingons are planning something big. They have been forcing us to design weapons. I want improved... The Klingons are planning something big. They've been forcing us to design weapons. They want improved disruptors and torpedoes for their ships, but some of their demands have been very specific. They want a weapon that can punch through solid neutronium, which is impossible, and they keep talking about torpedoes with payloads big enough to destroy a small planet. There are prototypes of some of the new weapons in the laboratory here. If I were you, I'd destroy them. No one needs that kind of destructive power. All right. Thank you. These Klingons have had me designing weapons for them at gunpoint. The scientists who finished their research are taken away. We're the only two left. They have a code sequencer on the main lab door, but I can help you there. Use this descrambler code to bypass it. Those scientists are safe, sir. It's time to find those weapons. Alright. Fall in. Fall in. So, uh, yeah, the audio just cut out on it. Uh, I'm recording this actually as I'm uploading uh, The Ultimate Klingon. Uh, this little bit of commentary here to sort of explain what was going on. There was supposed to be another cricket chirping sound effect there. And uh, apparently the editor decided to just mute the video. Kind of bizarre how that works. I don't quite know how you get one from the other. Which really kind of sucks, because there was this sort of funny moment where I was going, where the fuck is everyone? Where is everybody? And they're all just sort of chilling over here. They're, they were literally just standing in there while I was constantly calling them. So, bug report. Um, especially Revan, who seems completely unwilling to leave the room. He likes this room. He, he feels safe in this room, but he's part of the hazard team, so he has to leave so he can so he can do his job. And uh, that was pretty much it. There's nothing re of real import. It just r ruined a really funny moment where I was going, what are you guys doing in there? Um, it, it just kind of like ruined that moment. That kind of sucks. But there's nothing of plot importance happening in this chunk of the video. Really just me killing Klingons and planting bombs. And, uh, wondering, and we'll see the missiles themselves in a minute, whether or not these are the the actual Hargpeng missiles that are, we will see later on uh, that were developed uh, by Bavat secretly for uh, what takes place in the Doomsday device. And uh, I decided to open the door, and I kind of marvel how I just sort of wish the door out of existence rather than simply opening it. That doesn't happen anymore. There, there, there are doors that now open in the game, but uh, they haven't updated any of the doors in the old missions. And these are the missiles I was talking about. And, uh, yeah, so it, it's pretty much just me killing Klingons, planting bombs, and Pran jumping on things. Pran's running around with the Ophidian cane again. He's gonna, he uses that constantly, I've been noticing. He's been using that a lot more than he used to. And we'll see way more of the uh, Ophidian Cane getting used by the bridge officers, by the rest of the Hazard Team, in the Ultimate Klingon. This video is almost over, so I'm going to... Well, I don't know. I still got a few seconds left. Damn. I went early. It doesn't happen often, I swear. So I will see you guys... Uh, my past self will see you guys in the next video.